so in this video we shall be discussing a few important points regarding your thoracic surgery so in bailey and love in thoracic surgery there has been a lot of emphasis which has been laid on your preoperative scores so we shall be discussing a few of them and also your few basic concepts of of your obstructive or your restrictive lung disease and your few basic values of abg as what i've seen in the trends this are your few of the questions that are asked usually from the thoracic surgery chapter apart from the thymoma which has been discussed separately right so first we have your thoracoscope now this is your risk of operative mortality in thoracic surgery right so it consists of your nine variables so let's know what this nine variables are because you can be asked which of the following is not a component of thoracoscope so the first component that we know about is your age then we have sex then you have your american society of anesthesiologists grading then we have your performance status then we have your dyspnea score right then we have your priority of surgery then we have your extent of surgery then we have your malignant diagnosis and your last variable is your composite comorbidity score so this are your nine variables which is used in your thoracoscope now another important point is that now if a patient is had a heart attack then your surgery should be avoided right within 30 days of myocardial ischemia now the important question that is asked is obviously your duration so it should be avoided within 30 days of your myocardial ischemia now regarding your tripartite risk assessment for your surgery now you need to know that it consists of your three important variable first being your post operative dyspnea perioperative death and post operative cardiac event so this itself can be asked as a question like which of the following is not a component of your tripartite risk assessment for surgery now in case of post operative cardiac uh, event you have your acc or your aha risk stratification plus minus cardiology review in case of your perioperative death you have your thoracoscope score with the nine variables which we just discussed and then you have your post operative dyspnea which has a dynamic lung volumes transfer factor and split function testing now after this you address the potentially modifiable risk factor and reassess and thus the patient accept the risk in each category plus minus the potential impact on the lifestyle now if the answer is no then you exclude surgery from the multimodality management and if so answer is yes then you would offer the patient surgery right now these are your few important basic tables which has been dealt in medicine but then again the importance of using this table over here is that these are your few basic questions which we cannot afford to make a mistake right so the spirometry values in your obstructive and restrictive lung disease now in case of obstructive pattern you have your peak expiratory flow rate decreased which is normal or decreased in case of your restrictive pattern then you have your forced expiratory volume in one second which is decreased in your obstructive again normal or decreased in your restrictive pattern then you have your forced vital capacity which is normal or decreased in case of obstructive pattern and decreased in case of restrictive pattern and the most frequently asked question is your fe1 by fvc ratio which is less than 70 in case of obstructive and more than 80 in case of restrictive pattern 
Now over here regarding your spirometry, you must have been taught in physiology as well as in medicine. So please do not make a mistake of not revising these spirometry values. These are your some pancakes like questions which are to be grabbed, right? You cannot make a mistake in this. But do remember Fe1 by Fc uh, for, uh, force vital capacity is less than 17 case of obstructive and more than 18 case of restrictive pattern. Now regarding your arterial blood gases, so this normal values I am discussing, I am pretty sure you guys have mastered by now the various anion gap, metabolic acidosis, metabolic alkalosis, respiratory acidosis and respiratory alkalosis. In mastering this, please do not forget to know the basic values, right? It sometimes happens that we just forget the basic values, hence the purpose of using it over here. So pH normal pH is 7.35 to 4.5, PaCO2 is 4.5 to 6 kilopascal or 35 to 50 mm of Hg, PO2 is 11 to 14 kilopascal or 83 to 105 mm of Hg, then you have your standard bicarbonates which is 22 to 28 millimole per liter and then you have your anion gap which is 10 to 16 and chloride 98 to 107, right. Now, we had uh, read about your pneumothorax in your trauma section in the chest, uh, in the trauma section under your chest trauma. Now, there's another question that is free from your pneumothorax is regarding your management of pneumothorax. So first, I would discuss this important table, which is your indications of surgical intervention for your pneumothorax. So what are the surgical indications? The first being your second ipsilateral pneumothorax. The first ipsilateral pneumothorax may be actually managed conservatively, but then if there is a second ipsilateral pneumothorax, you need a surgical intervention or if there is a first contralateral pneumothorax, if there is a bilateral spontaneous pneumothorax. Now, if the pneumothorax fails to settle despite your chest drainage, then you have your spontaneous hemothorax, specifically the professions at risk like your pilots and driver and your pregnancy. So this is a five star table where from where the questions can be asked in your exam. Now, the next important point in your thoracic surgery, which I would want you all to know is regarding your management of your uh, pneumothorax right spontaneous pneumothorax right so if it is bilateral or hemodynamically unstable proceed to chest drain now whereas if it is age of 50 or significant smoking history and evidence of any underlying lung disease or examination on examination on x-ray if the answer is no then it is your primary pneumothorax if the answer is yes then it is your secondary pneumothorax now first let's look at the primary pneumothorax treatment so if it is a size of more than two centimeter and or breathlessness is present so the first step over here would be to aspirate using a 16 to 18 gauge cannula now if the aspirate is less than 2.5 liter and if it is a success then you can consider it to be a discharge now whereas if it is not a size of 2 centimeter or it is not there is no breathlessness then you can consider discharge and review in the opd in two to four weeks now if it is not a success then you need to go for a chest drain now the details about your chest drain has been dealt in your trauma under your chest trauma so you may just refer back to that particular section in order to know the details about the chest drain now if it is a secondary pneumothorax so if it is a more than two centimeter of breathlessness if the answer is yes you go directly for your chest drain now if the size is not more than two centimeter and if the size is between one to two centimeter then you go for an aspirate if it is a success then you admit the patient high flow oxygen and monitor the patient now if it is not a success then you again go for a chest rate now if the size is between one to two centimeter right then if it is not between one to two centimeter then you just admit the patient and put the patient on high flow oxygen and observe the patient for 24 hours. So this particular table is actually very important because it might give you a clinical clue to a lot of the scenarios that can be asked from your pneumothorax 
questions to solve like what, what would be your next step in the management of this pneumothorax now a few important points regarding your surgery for pneumothorax we have already uh, seen the various indication now the surgery of pneumothorax can actually be in two form that is your open or it can be in form of your vats right what is vats that is your video assisted thoracic surgery right now what is the purpose of this surgery for pneumothorax that is to deal any leakage from lungs then search and obliterate any blebs and bullet right and then you have your purpose to make the visceral pleura adherent to your parietal pleura right so now this pleural adhesions can be achieved by what methods it can be achieved by pleurectomy pleural abrasion and you have your chemical pleuro disease right so this were your few important points which i want you all to remember from your thoracic surgery your management of your spontaneous pneumothorax then your surgical interventions the abg scores then you have your spirometry values then you have your triparatric assessment and the thraco score right now we'll end this section on your thoracic surgery by discussing on two important chest wall defects right so the first one which i have is your pectus excavator right so this pectus excavator it is first of all most commonly seen in males compared to females now it is your most common chest wall deformity right now what happens over here the sternum is depressed right now the surgeries that is done is your open raft which and endoscopic nas procedures right so you need to remember the names over here and you need to differentiate it from your another important chest wall deform deformity which is your pectus carinatum which is also known as your pigeon chest now what happens over here is that sternum is elevated in contrast to your pectus excavatum where your sternum is depressed so in case of pectus carinatum or pigeon like chest you must have seen a pigeon so over here the sternum would be elevated right so this are usually asymptomatic now over here right so over here if the treatment is required it is mainly required for your aesthetic reasons right that is your on your cosmetic ground so remember this important chest wall deformities that is your pectus excavatum and pectus carinatum right so this were your few important points with respect to your thoracic surgery you need not go in detail so this are your few of the most important questions that have been asked or have the potential to be asked thank you